Yeah, uh, it expanded to quite a lot of people. Yeah, I know. I'm um so the first thing uh, what should I call you, buddy? Uh call me Kevin. Kevin. Okay. That's uh, so the first thing Kevin yeah, is yeah. I owe you an apology because I know we were scheduled to to talk on Friday and then I kind of bumped cuz I had a bunch of family in town and then we were scheduled to talk at the top yeah. of the hour but um Reckville wanted to come on and and um it actually sounded to me like what he was talking about was maybe a little bit relevant to what we were talking about. So I, I yeah, I I was I was I was close to crying at one yeah. point. I I really you messed with yeah. him. Yeah, and and so um, I, I'm sorry for you know bumping you a couple of times, and um, it's it's fine. It's really not. I understand. But, but <laughs> um, it's it's okay to say it's not too. So tell me a little bit. This I, I've. But as you know from stream, yeah. like we kind of had you on last week kind of impromptu. So I, I try to do things a little bit impromptu from time to time. And sometimes people get the short end of the stick for that. So I'm sorry about that. That's totally okay. fine. I mean that. Um, so tell me a little so, bit about, uh, you know, why don't you fill in people? Because we have 3,500 people. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot so of people. So why don't you, yeah. you want to just tell people um, a little bit about what we talked about last week and, and kind of, you know, what felt relevant sure. to you? We talked a lot about uh, pain versus suffering, uh, the act of feeling pain and the act of, of experiencing suffering, yeah. and um, a lot about actually how um, the, the nihilism, the way that Rick felt it versus how I felt it, it was very um, comparable, yeah. I feel. What was comparable uh, about uh, it? He also, uh, it felt like he had a, a childhood trauma that really... Um, shaped his 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 reality for him yeah. and uh and, and and that's completely the same and to catch people up i um almost lost my father when i was 12 and that really shaped how i felt about the world and and we got around to me feeling that the um that experience was was me um feeling that nothing was worth anything because when something can end in such a moment that uh that shapes your life. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and with the samskara, with the kid getting bit and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah. so um, Kevin, can we actually back up a little bit? Because that's not actually what we, where we sure. started, right? Where did we start? What did you first okay. say to me? You had a question. Uh, yeah, my question was, um, how do you uh, distinguish between the feeling of uh, wanting to not wanting to die, but not not wanting to live. Yeah. So so, I I personally feel that I don't want to die, but I really don't want to. Yeah, live. beautiful. Uh, and, and that was the. And question. what was it that brought that on? Do you remember what we talked about first? You jump into the punchline. Yeah, buddy. there was. A, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, that was my girlfriend leaving. Yeah. And uh, that shook up how my uh, exp expectations were of the future. And uh, I, I feel like it, it has only gotten worse. <laughs> but um, what's gotten worse? But that was really the the trigger. Uh, I found out today that she might be already seeing someone else, and I feel like uh, like reflecting on that. I feel like the thought I I had about maybe trying to get it to work or in any shape or form trying to get it to work uh, might have been shattered now. Uh, and and I've uh, I build all my um, expectations of reality and and all my joy in uh, in a life with her. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna take yeah, that was we're gonna take a step back. Okay. So the first thing to understand is that. Yeah. So my recollection, Kevin, from what we talked about last time, is that you know you had said that you're not quite. It's not that you're suicidal and you want to kill yourself, but you just don't see anything worth living in life. It's that yeah. life sort of lacks purpose or zest, and that for yeah, and and go ahead. And we uh, we we actually talked about. Uh, I actually had been feeling that that like that before I yep. met her five years ago. So that's a that's a long time of of, of feeling that uh, that she was the the only thing worth living for. Absolutely. Uh, and I had that feeling before that, and the the feeling goes goes way back into my, yeah. my teenage years. So I, I think a lot yeah. like Reckful, so so from what I remember from our conversation, you had felt like, you know, life was purposeless, and, and then you met her. And once you met yeah. her, then suddenly, like, you can start to build a life. You can start to move forward, because you can live with her, you guys are going to get married, you're going to have kids, blah, 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 yada, 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 maybe, maybe not. But that you can sort of start to construct a life that has purpose and meaning. 
But the truth is that yeah. that's actually not like a real like purpose. That's just a distraction. Right? A a and so you start to build this yeah. life. You kind of put all your eggs in one basket. And and that's... I, yeah, I did. Absolutely. So and, and then what happens is once you break up, then you feel like your life is purposeless. But the truth is that the purposelessness began way before her. So what do you want to yeah. talk about today? Do you want to talk about the origin of the purposelessness? Do you want to talk about the prospect of her, like, dealing with sort of the feelings that she may be dating someone again and what that brings up for you? Because even if you know that she's not really the root of the problem, it can be really hard to shake all of the negative emotions. Yeah, I think I feel like, especially today, um, I, I would have said, uh, talk about my past and with my dad and stuff like that but but the feeling I I got today was uh, quite intense let's, uh, that uh, let's talk about today buddy yeah have to start yeah, with today uh, yeah I found out that um, she's using like we haven't divided anything we've been living together for three years so uh, so so it's quite a lot and uh, I found out that that she's been she she was buddies with this one guy uh, while we were dating and uh, now that that we're not, uh, she's gotten to loan some some uh, transportation card or whatever. You, and and I find out essentially by checking that, not stalking. I was just checking to make sure it is system in Denmark, but that she was going to his address. It just showed mm. up. Uh, I thought it was my card. I have two, so she could have one when we were together. And uh, I found out essentially that, that she's been going to this guy and. Uh, after we talked, I, I kind of tried to make my mind um, aware that that we might not ever again be be together. And uh, I I think that the little you tried to make your own mind of aware of that, or the mind started thinking that automatically. Uh, I tried to make my mind think of that, but but uh, like I'm, I'm I'm still sleeping twenty hours okay. uh, a day, and and I'm still like not, not eating, and uh, yeah. Um, and essentially that shattered like I, before a hundred percent of my life was trying to get this to work. And I tried to like put my mind into the, like, I'm going to try like 20% of it has to, I, I, I thought makes made sense of trying to get this to work and maybe she needs time and, and stuff like this. Uh, but I feel like the, the chance has diminished so much that, yeah. I think it, it, it gives me a, a sense of new meaningless. Yeah. So what is your... Okay, so let's just think about this for a second. So on the one hand, it sounds like you recognize that your your lack of purpose has nothing to do with your relationship. Yeah, and, I, I feel... And yeah. at the same time, you've built up this sense of purpose which your mind has gotten used to, right? It's become a part of you. That you were deriving a yeah. sense of purpose. It was sort of like you're you're thirsty and you're moving through a desert and there's no water anywhere and you find an oasis, which is her, and she's giving you water. And this relationship is keeping you alive. And then the relationship yeah. ends and then suddenly you're back in the desert again. And not only that, yeah. but you're thinking, maybe I can find that oasis again. Like maybe if I put effort into it, we can be together again. And then you find this thing on the transportation card, which sort of tells you like, oh, like actually like the Oasis is probably never going to be there. Yeah, yeah. Like the chance is slim. And, and I really feel that um, the thought that I might not ever find this Oasis with water again is like, I, I want to be with her like logically. And, and I think she's a kind, sweet person. I love her a lot, obviously. And um but I think the, the only thing that has given me any form of drive lately has been like she would uh, come over last week and divide some stuff. And uh, and that was the first time I showered. It was the first time I ate. It was the first time I actually cleaned. How do you feel about that? Uh, it makes me really sad. Um, What's sad about that? Because... I think it's the thought of maybe never again. 
experiencing that the way she made me feel like uh, and the the prospect of a family and the prospect of a family with her uh, I think the connection we made we were both when we were sitting and talking when we met last like we weren't mad at each other we weren't and we told and we <laughs> got to saying that maybe we should have been friends before we became uh, before we got together mm. And uh, I think the um, the prospect of going forward without that really, uh, really hits me. Hits it's, you uh, in what way? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it it goes back to feeling fulfilled, uh, being happy. Okay. So I think uh, you've grown attached to this relationship, right? Which is normal. And we talked last yeah. time about how like pain is, you can't avoid pain or negative emotion in life, but attachment yeah. is what leads to suffering. So it's expectation that leads to true suffering. Yeah. Right. It's like when I, when I'm opening a present and I think it's going to be a new iPhone and it turns out to be an Android. Well, I would actually be happy, but you know, other people, <laughs> but a pap yeah. Yeah. And it's it's like when a when a movie that you've heard everything about, you've heard everyone says it's awesome, it's awesome, it's awesome, and it disappoints. That's because expectation is actually the real devil. But in your case, I think there's way right. more going on than sadness. So you're she made you feel a certain way, fine. Is there grief that should happen over the relationship? Absolutely. But I think that there's more than sadness. Are you detecting any other emotions? Uh, hopelessness. Um, okay. Tell me about that. Uh, we talked last time about how um, everything I did in my life was really revolved around building this expectation, like building the, uh, like, I, I'm i looking forward to getting my degree so that we can have more money and we can have, we can go on adventures together. And the, uh, when I was at school, the only reason why I would want to get through the day was to get home to her and that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you had really become dependent on her to motivate you. Yeah. And most of the time I would skip school just to relax with yeah. her. And I think that, and uh, I have a lot of guilt over, over, um, Uh, sorry, someone messaged me. Um, I have a lot of guilt about me not trying hard enough. That's really, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, susceptible to, to the feeling of failure mm -hmm. and the feeling of, of uh, missing out. Yeah. Uh, that hits me really hard. Um, what, why? So let's, absolutely, man. So we're going to get to that. Because I think that's actually the real problem. So we're going to talk about this in a second, okay? So tell me, why do you think you're so susceptible yeah. to the feeling of failure? <laughs> that's a hard one. Yep. Um, I'm sorry, my voice is quivering. I'm really trying really hard to to speak clear and loudly. You can uh, quiver. Being Danish and it's all. It's okay. Um, the first time I wanted to kill myself was five and a half years ago and that was because I was I was fulfilling the <laughs> I was trying to do an education that I know my father would be proud of. Which I really didn't want to do. I 
father, I think I've been chasing this acceptance of love from my father all this time. Yeah. Sounds like someone's been doing some thinking over the last week. <laughs> like, I've, I've known these things for years. I'm aware of them. <sighs> but I have a really hard time opening up about it because I know that I would cry and I would feel like this. How do you... F so and this feels like shit. Okay. So you feel yeah. bad right now? I hate... Yeah. What feels bad? Tell me. <laughs> Every time I cry, it feels like physical pain. Absolutely. In my head and in my chest okay. and... Yeah. <sighs> That's Sorry. okay. So we're gonna help you with that physical pain for a moment. Yeah. And then we're gonna we're gonna talk about the psychology of it, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do yeah. is we're gonna try to calm you down a little bit. So sit up straight, close your eyes. We're gonna do another kind of meditation. So I'm gonna teach you something called triphasic breathing. Okay? So sit up straight. Yeah. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to try to keep your chest still, but as you inhale, move your abdomen. So move your belly, push your belly out as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, pull your belly in. Breathe in, pull, push the belly out. As you breathe out, pull the belly in. So with each breath, I want you to move your belly button out and then in. Out and then in. So just do that for a moment. And now what I want you to do is when you breathe in, pull the, so breathe in with your belly first and then expand your chest. There you go. Expand it out wide and then breathe out. And bring your belly in again. Get that last bit of air out. Beautiful. And now, one more breath. And then the last phase is raise your shoulders. Pull your shoulders up. Up. Good. Like that. And then out. So first the belly, then the chest, and then the last little bit is with the shoulders. And then out. And one more breath. Now just sit. Eyes closed. Feel your head. Feel your chest. What do you feel? Much more cool. Okay. Yeah. So, Kevin, point number one. You gotta stop, ru stop running away from the feelings. They're piling up. They're overwhelming you. Yeah. The reason that you feel I purposeless, that that, like you well, can't feel meaning in life because any time... So the place that meaning comes from is the same place that negative emotions come from. Because remember this whole point about dharma is that dharma gives you purpose despite negative emotions. The problem yeah. is that you can't find dharma because you're running away from the negative emotions. Dharma is the most pure dharma that you can find is when negative emotions exist. That's when you find the real meaning of life, right? Not when you're like partying on a yacht 
It's like when you're in a concentration camp or you're like Martin Luther King giving a speech about civil rights or you're like trying to like save the world, like when you're trying to save another human being, when you're in the operating room and you're performing surgery and you're tired and, and you're sweaty and you're afraid that they're going to die, like that's when you find your meaning. The biggest problem that so many people have is that you run away from your negative emotions. You're so afraid of the way that they make you feel that you can't go to the place where you're going to find the purpose. So the first thing that we've got to help you do is to face those negative emotions, sit with them, breathe through them, and accept them. Because your problem isn't sadness. Your problem isn't an empty life. Your problem is fear. Your problem is that you've been living a life, like you don't have purpose in your life because you haven't been living for yourself for decades. You stopped living for yourself a long time ago. So no wonder you can't find purpose because you like, you've forgotten, you never learned how to live for yourself. You started by living for your dad and then you started by living for your girlfriend. So you move from person to person to person that can give you meaning. You pick a career that would make yeah. your dad happy instead of one that would make you happy. So it's like you've leveled up like yeah. living for others and like your ability to live for yourself has become completely buried. And why is it completely buried? Because anytime you think about your life, like sure, your girlfriend made you happy, but the real problem is here is that somewhere along the way you never learned or you forgot that you can be happy with other people. That you can be happy on your own. That you actually don't need another yeah, but... human being to make you happy. But you never learned yeah. that. So we've got to, this, this is a problem of uncertainty about the future. The reason you're so yeah. attached to this oasis is because you don't have faith that if you trek out into the desert, you won't find water. That's the problem. It's about fear. Sure, you feel sad. Like, I think yeah. anyone who has a breakup is going to feel sad. I don't think that those feelings are bad. No, and, and I... I'm... I can actually, I feel like I can separate those Good. feelings and, and I really know how you mean because I think for the for the last almost two weeks now I've been um, I, I, I can't have have uh, quiet quietness uh, I always have to have yes. something uh, uh, if it's in my headphones or when I'm lying in bed, like 90% of the time, I have to get my iPad and, and have Absolutely. something going like a stream or a YouTube video. Yeah. And I fall asleep. Absolutely. To it too. So this is the thing right now, yeah. your head is a terrifying place. You cannot face what is going on yeah. in your head. It's overwhelming. I've described it. Yeah. I, I tried to, to, um, use art at one point to describe it to, to my then girlfriend and, when I just described it to her, it was like all all the negative things I have is like a Pandora's box. Absolutely, sitting in a basement, and uh, I'm 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 even too afraid to even enter the basement. Absolutely, you have to try. And I know. Yeah. I, I mean, I sort of know how you feel because I was in the same place. So when I was like failing out of college, like I'm the child of two doctors. And everyone in our like social circle is like very accomplished and all that kind of good stuff. And so like I knew I was yeah. failing at life and I felt so ashamed. And I knew I was fucking up and I could do nothing to stop it. And every day that went by, I fucked it up more and I fucked it up more and I fucked it up more. And I was just like on this like downward spiral and I couldn't stop it. And so the only thing yeah. that gave me relief is that I would play video games until I was so exhausted that I would just pass out. No time for my mind to think. The scariest time was when I laid was when I was laying in bed and I could not distract myself because all of that shame and that negativity would come boiling up. Yeah. But here's the thing, Kevin. You think it's scary down there, and it absolutely is scary. But that's not going to destroy you. It can't destroy you. I don't believe it can destroy you. You're afraid of it because you don't know what's down there, right? So fear, understand this, Kevin. Fear lives off of a lack of information. The less we know, the more afraid we are. Right? Like if, if, if I'm a six-year-old kid 
and I'm afraid there's a monster in the closet. Do you know, is that door open or closed when I'm afraid there's a monster in there? <laughs> it's always Absolutely. Closed. Absolutely, right? And why is that? Okay. Yeah. Because it's fucking scary. Yeah. And what happens if the door opens? You're afraid of what's going to Yeah, but come what out. happens after the door opens? I don't know. So, like, let's say that I have a six-year-old kid, and the kid is afraid that there's a monster in the closet, and then I'm the parent, and I walk in and I open the door. What does the kid do? Get and then? Do they stay scared once the door is open? Realize that. No. They, they can't. They learned that. Yeah, they learned that there's nothing. So there. is it absolutely traumatic when I reach my door, when, when I reach to open the door handle? Absolutely. The kid is going to freak the fuck out. They're like, no, 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 don't open it. Don't open it. Don't open it. Don't open it. And they're, ter they're terrified. And then I open the door and there's nothing back there. Now, in your case, there's something in the basement, but you've got to understand this. Fear thrives off of a lack of information. It can only exist in hypotheticals. Fear is not about reality. It is about the hypothetical. Yeah, that's the only thing I've been thinking about all day. It's the hypotheticals. And yes. Trying to use Occam's razor to like, what if she just went there to get some of his so stuff? So forget, or... you need to stop living in hypotheticals. Yeah. And, and really start living with where you are. And the beautiful thing is that like, so I want you to understand this. When you push the emotions away, that's a hypothetical too. That's not a reality. You're keeping the emotions in the hypothetical zone because you're not living them. As you start to live, like how, how bad was it to cry, Kevin? Just now. Both good and bad. Um, I'm actually crying right yeah. now. Uh, when you were telling that, and that was a, a much easier experience. Yeah. So, like, newsflash, you stepped down into the basement and you survived. So this is the yeah. big lesson that you somehow have not learned, is that you are fucking indestructible. Like, you just don't know that. And, like, here you're doing it. You're crying in front of 2,458 people right now. I was afraid it was still 5,000. Yeah, thankfully but, uh, we lost some I don't have this stream okay. up on purpose. Yeah. Right? <laughs> It's hard enough to cry by yourself, but yeah. you're crying in front of like 2,500 people. And like, hey, guess what? You're still here. Yeah, and, and I think the, the really hard part about thinking about this breakup was that that I am going to live. Uh, and I think maybe even more that I might reach a day where she isn't a part of this and where I'm with someone else and I'm I invested these five years into something that might be like gone forever. I, the, the, the thing about something being permanently gone because of something I may have done is world wrecking yes. to me. So this is because you're arrogant. You're so arrogant. You believe you have the power to control that relationship. Where do you get the nerve believing that if you did things differently, that relationship would still be alive? That is the depth of arrogance. You need to understand that in this world, you only are entitled to what you do. You are not entitled to what happens. There is incredible freedom in this. That you don't get to control what happens in that relationship. That's your problem. Your problem is arrogance, that if you had done this, if you had done this, if you had done this, or even today, if you do this tomorrow, if you do this tomorrow, that you can repair that relationship. The relationship is not yours to control. It's just not. The faster you accept that, the faster you can try, you can try to be civil, you can try to tell her, hey, I want to get back together, but that's all you're entitled to. You're not actually entitled to the relationship. And the other thing is that yeah. I, I do think that, you know, you'll have invested five years into this relationship and it could end. And that may seem like a waste, but I can tell you that I don't think it's a waste because I think that the lessons we learn in life are invaluable. So I started medical school at the age of 27, which is like one year after most of my friends from college graduated. So when they were graduating, I hadn't even been accepted yet. And it was like incredibly shaming. And so I'd think like, oh, I like wasted five years of my life. No, 
Like, did I, like, did I waste five years of my life? Yes. And it's made me the person that I am today. And I needed to waste those five years of my life because now I can get on Twitch and I can talk to people like you because you feel like you've wasted five years. And is it a waste? Yeah, but it's also like it's making you the person that you are. And you have to live, yeah, uh, you have to live like where you are. You can't live in a hypothetical world. Like you have to, you have to play the character that you rolled, right? Like once you make a character, like that's the character. And if you like screw up and you wipe, you have to like, you have to start, like you have to respawn and then you got to like play from where you respawned. It does, doesn't matter. Like you can't, you can get upset about wiping as much as you want, but like you got to play, like if you respawn, you respawn and then you zone back in and then you try to take down whatever raid boss like, you try again. The problem is that you don't, like, you're in the process of respawning and you don't, like, you don't think that you, you just think you get one shot. But you don't. You get many shots. That's what's cool about yeah. life, is you actually get to keep trying until you die. Yeah. And I think I've been overthinking this because it, every time I uh, I think about this, I I think about what what, what a what am I going to tell her? How am I going to tell her? What words would I use to make the 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 outcome favor yeah. me? And maybe yeah. getting her, yeah, to try again and stuff like that. What what makes the highest percentage of uh, success? So, so I want you to notice, Kevin, that that thing is like a little like parasite in your mind. That there's a part of yeah. your mind that's because I know it dulls me from acting. Absolutely. And it tells me from from acting how I how my my true self really wants to act. There you go. So I, Kevin, you're doing it because you just fucking figured out that you have a true self. That's beautiful. Right now yeah. that you see that that thing is trying to hold on to this false sense, like the second you begin to realize that you have a true self, and you're already realizing it. So this is the cool thing about Nyan. So Nyan is, the sans- is one of the Sanskrit words for knowledge, which means understanding. You can't shake understanding. Once you understand something, you can't ununderstand it. Once you understand that 2 plus 2 equals 4, then you always understand that 2 plus 2 equals 4. You can forget, but you can't stop understanding. Once you know what a strawberry tastes like, once you know what cheese tastes like, once you know what it lo- it's like to take a hot shower, once you know what it's like to take a cold shower, experience cannot be taken away from you. And your salvation lies in the fact that you've started to discover that there is a true self under there. I don't know how you found it. But you know that something is not your true self. And that gives me hope. Yeah. Because you used to think that the the part of you that craved a relationship with her, that needed a relationship with her, was your true self. But what if I feel like that's still... That maybe becomes what I want. What becomes what you want? But I have a, I have a hard time like pulling those two feelings away from each other because I think it's it's so melted together. I, I know that I have so, a true self and a way that I would act without uh-huh. thinking. But if I would like tell you how I feel without thinking, I would still feel that. I would want this to work the best way that's possible. Fine. So, so trying. Yeah. So, so I yeah. want you to understand that that's actually not like that's a part of you, right? So your desire to have her be a part of your life again is very real, and that you've grown attached to that, right? Like that's what happens. You've grown attached, and so like detachment can be a painful process. And it's fine to want to be with her again. Just recognize those thoughts. Recognize that there's a part of you that that no matter what you do or what you think or how much you grow, there's a part of you that's always going to want to want to try to control her and manipulate her into getting back with you. Yeah, and, and that's the really hard part because how do I how do I try to get her back without essentially, as you're saying, manipulating her? Because I don't want her to be sad. I don't want her to actually be in a relationship that that doesn't fulfill her. Either way, I, I love her very much, and that's I mean that in a very deep way, so I don't want to influence her in any way that would make her life less. See, yeah, so that's and, conflict, right? Yeah. Because there's a part of you that's saying, if she can be happy with someone else, I want that for her because I love her. And there's a part of you that's yeah. saying, oh, hell no. I want her to be with me. 
So the first thing to understand is that there are these two warring parts of you, that one of them is attachment and one of them is love. Those are two different things and they oftentimes get confused. Attachment and love. But what, and those conflict when I, and this is a very, I, I don't, I hope I don't get too much hate for saying that, but I truly think that she could be happy with oh, Of me. course. So let's be clear. Yeah. The part of you that is attached is not wrong. It's not incorrect. It's just attached. Of course she could be happy with you. That's not incorrect. So the way that we defeat that part, actually, we don't defeat it, but the way that we don't defeat it by proving it wrong, which you can try to do. So sometimes when you have a war within your mind, like you try to fight against yourself and that's exhausting so this is what you need to do i want you to pretend so let me ask you this you lost your dad uh, i didn't lose him uh, i was close to losing him and i've been close to losing him uh, two more times okay. after that so the part of you that is afraid of losing her does that feel but i can does that can, can i sure. give you an example my um my grandfather was essentially my second dad because of mm, because my father was a little bit absent and I lost him some years ago. So we can use that. Okay. So instead. when you think about losing her, does it feel like the same? Do you feel like you're 12 years old again and your dad is sick? Yeah. It, it actually feels very much the same. It feels like my whole life is yeah. over. So um, that's the sum scar. I, I, feel a, I, I feel a very strong feeling of panic. Yep. Um, we, we, we were scheduled to actually see each other today. And when she called uh, me and said she was sick, that, uh, and that I could, I, I've known her for five years, she wasn't sick. <laughs> um, that made me panic very much because now I'd lost my chance to. Talk so, to so her. this is important, okay? Uh, so I'm going to just type this out in chat for a second. So the sum scar gets activated when you were about to lose someone, when there's a prospect of losing someone. So I want you to understand this very carefully. If you actually lose her at some point, then you're going to feel fine. Like you'll feel sad, but the sum scar won't be active. So the thing is, you guys have broken up, but you don't feel like you've lost her, right? You actually feel like... No. So do you see... I feel like there's a tiny yeah. hope. So yeah. as long as that that's the feeling with your dad, because you didn't actually lose your dad. So the fear is about the possibility of loss. And your mind is actually in the place where there's a possibility of loss. You feel like there's still hope in the relationship. That's the sum scar. The weird thing is like, it's sort of like if you get bit by a dog and you walk down the street and you see a cat, you don't feel scared. So once you know that the relationship is finally over, the sum scar is actually going to deactivate in a bizarre way and you'll feel better. Because then it's not the same situation. It's not. It's the possibility of loss that you're the most scared of. So yeah. what do you do about this? The first thing is you got to stop fighting. That doesn't mean give in. I want you to pretend. So how old are you now, Kevin? Okay. 26. So I want you to pretend that there's a 12-year-old you and there's a 26-year-old you. And the 12-year-old you is terrified of losing your dad. So imagine you're, you're your own older brother what would you do with the 12 year old? I have no idea. Yes, that's the problem, right? Because you don't know how to comfort that, that person. You don't know how to help that person. That person doesn't need to be proven they're wrong. That person needs like compassion and help. You need reassurance. You need someone to say, hey buddy, like sure, this person may pass away or this relationship may end, but I have faith in you and I'm going to be with you and we're going to figure this out together. That's what you need to learn how to tell yourself. Right? That loss yeah. can happen and it's scary and it's not what you want and I'm not saying it's fair. I'm not saying it's pleasant. It's going to be shitty. But it doesn't yeah. have to destroy you. Do you believe it's going to destroy you? Logically, no, but it feels yeah. like it. It feels like I only have like one month to yeah. live. So understand that you're, you're allowed to feel that way. You're absolutely allowed to feel that way, right? And you don't have to argue against it because that's how you feel. And 
as best as you can, like just pause and try to find that center. So I think you should meditate. You have a way that you can learn meditation? Uh, oh, uh, like through YouTube and stuff? Yeah, I want you to go somewhere. I don't know. You have a yoga class that you can go to? Uh, not, no, no. I'm, I'm a poor student. I don't, I, I can't really buy anything. I, I have a gym okay, membership. Does your, they does might your have, gym have a yoga? They might yeah, have so look into that. They might have. So the other thing that I want to explain to you and everyone who's watching is that so men especially feel like emotions in their body. Like they don't understand mentally like what emotion they're feeling, but they certainly feel it in their body. And the example that I like to give is like, you know, when someone gets like when I get dumped by my girlfriend, I don't know what I'm feeling. Like, I don't know how to say like, I'm afraid that I'm never going to find love again. Like, that's not what you tell your friends. You say like, oh, yeah, man, she hit me like she kicked me in the nuts. Like, that's what you say. And, like, everyone understands what you mean. You guys under all understand what that means. You don't understand, like, what that is emotionally, but you understand it physically. Like, that's how it feels. So what you need to do is work on your body. So if you have the option to see a therapist or something like that, I definitely think you should do that. Especially if you've been... I have good. a... Yeah, I already have a time, actually. I have time at the doctor's good. tomorrow. Excellent. So that's... Take the other thing you need to do is understand that Emotional processing for you, if you want to, if you want to clean out the basement without ever going down there, you must use your body. Yoga or Tai Chi is best. Exercise is good, but apparently yoga and Tai Chi is better. That's what science says. So as you start to move your body, you're going to feel that tightness. And then like, just like we did today is you breathe into the tightness. It starts to feel better. And that's not suppression. That's not forgetting. That's not distraction. That's you actually sitting with and feeling and processing your emotions. You're doing it physically, which is really cool that you can do that. Because the body and the mind are connected. And if you feel mentally bummed out up here, your energy level is going to drop. And if you use caffeine, you're going to feel activated up here. Body and mind are connected, and you need to use them both. So I think therapy is good. I think yoga is good. Do Surya Namaskar, the sun salutation. I'm going to type it in chat. Let me just... Okay. S-U-R-Y. I'll, I'll, I'll DM you too. Qigong is good too. Qigong is like pranayam. So pranayam and Qigong as well as asan and tai chi. Um, it's a sequence of yoga poses. If you do three Surya Namaskars in the morning and three Surya Namaskars before you go to bed, I think you're going to feel way oh, better. Kind of, oh, sorry. Kind of I said, if you feel like if you do uh, three in the morning, three rounds of Surya Namaskar in the morning and three rounds of Surya Namaskar at night, you're going to feel better. Can you? Can yeah, you, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll message. I'll DM, DM me I'll that. DM. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because I don't. Yeah, okay. Sure. Cool. So questions, Kevin? Um, like one thing I have is is more practical now because I know we, we reach very much the core of the problem, but when I'm the, these past uh, week and a half, I've, I've been sleeping 20, 20 hours uh, out of 24 and uh, I haven't been outside much. And uh, yeah, even eating, I've lost 15 pounds in this time. And uh, the only question I really have is is how practical, like practically, uh, to do stuff. Like how how can I yeah. get? Because I also feel like if I, like one reasoning I have between this and 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 thinking clearly how I want, if I were to get her back, was that I have to be in another place. I have to be good. Like yeah, I have to get better, and. And and also for myself, like that it's it's not just for that okay. of the relationship, but I have to get better. So I don't know how how to to get out yeah, of so, bed. I, so I, I think that know. sometimes human beings yeah. forget that we're communal animals and we try to do everything ourselves. So in Sanskrit, there's a word called sangha. Sangha means community, and sangha is critical for success in meditative or spiritual practice. So I think the problem, like the simplest way is that you have to figure out, do you have any kind of community that you can engage with? 
I actually don't only have my family. <laughs> I I I moved to to this town because of her. Okay. So it, it, yeah, and I I I have a few few friends. Okay. So a couple of things. The first is, um, you know, so part of what we do, like part, like so, I stream, but then we also do a lot of other stuff with Healthy Gamer. So one of those things is we're training a group of recovery coaches, and you guys can sign up at healthygamer.gg. So I think that like you should maybe think about joining some of our groups and stuff and then like start talking to people, working with people who are sharing like similar problems that you guys, that you have and you guys help each other. The other thing is you've got to find community because you're not, it's like really hard neuroscientifically and behaviorally to just like turn your life around. So I think it's good that you're going to the doctor. Like you, you're, in, you're a student, right? So there are people in yeah. class I'm just about to graduate, and uh, and I actually have. Lit are you? I I don't have any anyone around me. Okay, basically. so like, are you gonna get a job? I hope so. What's that yeah. process looking like? Uh, it looks very uh, hard right now, or uh, uh, it looks. I I can't find the the word in in English. Um, it looks exhausting to actually do yeah. that process, and yeah, and I'm not looking forward yeah, to so it. Yeah, so I'm at glad all. that you're seeing a doctor tomorrow because you actually sound like you're clinically depressed. How long have you been feeling this way? Did you say clinically yes. depressed? Yeah. It cut out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This way. Yeah. All my life, I would say, but that. How takes long me have back you been sleeping? Twenty hours a day. My father got sick. Uh, if my girlfriend permitted it, I, I would have slept twenty hours a day, most of our relationship. Okay. Yeah, so I think definitely get an evaluation, and I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think you've got to find something to do, right? So I don't know, like, what you're yeah. interested in, and it sounds like, I, you're you're graduating. And so I don't know if you guys have job fairs or things like that, but like I think you've got to find a community because a community is what's going to help you out when you're in your darkest time. Like when I went to the ashram, sure, I did yeah. a lot of yoga and meditation, but there were other people there that were also doing yoga and meditation to try to figure out who they were and what's going on in their life. Yeah. So if you go to the gym and like they do a yoga class, like you should go every week because you're going to be meet people. And then one day one of them is going to be like, hey, do you want to go grab a coffee or something? Fine. And I, I absolutely. Yeah. It's actually. Go ahead. It, it's funny. Uh, the day after we talked, I had this, uh, and it's funny. But now that we listen to Rickful and I listen to you about saying that you want to help as many people as possible, I had the a very intense feeling of I wanted to do this um, school. Uh, what's it called when you come up and speak to people in in like. Um, like a motivational speaker. I'm losing it. Not motivational speaker, but but a a person who like visits a school to talk about the people who have had these problems and and maybe trying Good. to help. Yeah, I had a very intense feeling of of that <laughs> the day after Good. we talked. So I think that's that's the, how dharma is born, right? When you start recognizing that, like the reason yeah. you can sleep twenty hours a day because the is the, because the only person you're screwing over is yourself. And yeah. And I don't Absolutely. really care much about that, That's the about problem, that person right? You right don't now. value yourself. Yeah. And so I think therapy will help yeah. with that. And I think you, you know, having someone else in your life like that, that you're beholden to is really important. Like it's 920. I've been in my office on a Sunday since three o'clock. And why is that? Like, I, this is not how I want to spend my Sunday. I mean, it is, but it's, you know, this is my day off. I know what you mean. Like, yeah. right. So I get like two days off and I work a lot during yeah. the week. And, and this is what keeps us going. This is what yeah. allows us to tolerate suffering. And so I think you should absolutely yeah. find your dharma. But it starts with little things. So I'd say, like, go to the gym and see what kind of classes. Like, it doesn't even matter. If they don't have yoga classes, go to a class. Inter interact with other human beings. And expand your orbit. Because as human beings, we're wired to, like, do things and care about things that other people care about. Like, that's what peer pressure is. When everyone at school, when you're 15 and everyone has, like, a certain backpack or a certain kind of genes, that's what you want. So your problem is that your peer pressure, you know who you know what peer pressure means? Yeah. So sure. like where are you yeah. getting peer pressure from? 
No, no incorrect. One. Yeah, from from the people around me, but right so now. So who are I'm you getting, around right now? Right now, I'm I'm probably be around two thousand no, no, no. people. <laughs> In your life, who are your peers? It's kind of a trick question. Yeah, you're around yourself. I, I, you're yeah. your peer. You're in your head. Yeah. You have multiple versions of you. You talk to yourself all the time. So all of the things that so, you so much yeah. that I yeah. So like the hot new jeans at your school is your girlfriend. That's the only thing that matters because that's the all the people in your head, all of the different versions of you, the part of you that's sad, the part of you that's fearful, the part of you that wants to control, the part of you that's hungry for a better life. All of those people, they all want one thing, and that's her. So you've got to spend time around other people. You guys have to understand that your head is not like monolithic. Your mind is not one thing. Your mind is like a whole host of different voices and desires and feelings and logic and rationality and emotions, and that they all fight against each other for supremacy, habits, wanting to play video games, wanting to eat certain kinds of food, wanting to eat other kinds of food, wanting to change, wanting to stay, stay the same. Your mind is a whole orchestra of different people. The problem is that all of your peer pressure just makes you value her. So you've got to you've got to find other peers. Because when you're out with a bunch of yoga people, like they're going to all care about like self-development and growth and being spiritual and not polluting the earth and all that kind of crap. And like you like your brain is just wired to care about that stuff if you hang around with other people who care about that stuff. So you got to just yeah. spend time with other people. I don't care how you do it. Like you're a smart guy. Like I'm sure you can find something. Gym is a great place to start. So go to a class. It can be CrossFit. It can be like Zumba. It can be yoga. It can be gym. Like I, whatever. And then as you start applying for jobs, like see if there are career events. Like if there are job fairs or things like that. Make a resume and start going to places. Like ask your counselors or whatever your resources are. And like find yourself a fucking job because being depressed is bad. Being lonely is bad. Being dumped is bad. Being all of those things and broke is worse. Yeah. Okay, and the last thing is that... It really is. Kevin, I don't think you're a piece of shit, man. I, I don't think that you're a waste of space, and I, I don't think that your life is hopeless. And I think that, that the biggest problem, the reason that you feel that way is because you actually don't understand who you are. Is because the version of you that exists is the one that you discovered when you lived your life based on other people. So the only you that you know is actually not the real you. Yeah. Questions? Maybe Thoughts? that's why I... Yeah, maybe that's why I have to have something running all the time because then I have a less a chance of hearing my yeah. own thoughts. Right, because you think your thoughts are scary, but you've got to... They're not that... I mean, they're going to be bad. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. And sometimes if you do feel suicidal or something like that, you should go talk to someone. Yeah, I've, I've, I've talked to a hotline and I know Good. where I can go if 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 I'm there. So, yeah. yeah. Questions for me, buddy? Yeah. Uh, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I don't think there's yep. anything really Good. pressing. Yeah, so you're going to feel overwhelmed because the, the amount of transformation. So let me tell you why you feel overwhelmed. You're at the base of Mount Everest and you're looking up to the top and you're saying, wow, that is a really far way to climb. And you know what? You're right. And you should feel overwhelmed. But whether you're climbing a mountain that's 30,000 feet high, 20,000 feet high, or 300 feet high, how do you climb that mountain? One step All you time. can do. Right? Yeah. You can't meditate for 10 years. You can't be sober for 10 years. You can't be in a 10-year relationship. You can only meditate today. You can only work out today. You can only eat today. You can only apply to one job today. You can only ask a girl out today. That's all you can do. The rest is up to, I don't know, God, luck, entropy, karma, whatever you want it to be. As a human being, you only control what you do. You don't control what happens. And the more that you recognize One that, the more free you will be and the more chill you will be and the more your life will start to turn around. Yeah. So, good night, my friends in Twitch chat. And good <laughs> luck. 
You're Thank most you welcome. Much. And it thanks is, for being patient. It, of course. It, it's so, you, you're making such a immense um, difference. Uh, and just listening to this with Rayquel, I'm, I'm, I was lucky enough to get on after him, but just being witness to it was actually also good. very good. I think that the, you teach and the outreach is fun. Well, that's what we're here for, buddy. So, you're most you welcome, so and good luck, and, and stay in touch, okay? Come back on stream. Let us know, Thank like, you. be a success I story. Will. Yeah, so this I is will. Actually, this is really important, Kevin. So there are going to be, there are a couple thousand right. people watching this stream, and, yeah. like, they need to see you, and they need to see you not fuck up. Because right now, you have the option to, like, fuck up your life over the next couple of months, or start to build something. And, like, if you fuck it up, then that's not going to be anything to them. But I, there are people in Twitch chat. I, I mean, you can go back and watch the VOD. A lot of people relate to some of the things that you're feeling, which is what stream is about. You related to Rightful. We all relate to each other. We're all kind of like in the same boat, right? Myself included. Yeah. And so I inspire people because I got my shit together and you can too. And that's your dharma. So people need to see you because they're going to say like, oh, this guy is like, I'm like, that guy's so fucking pathetic. Like if he can do it, I should be able to do it. Or you yeah. can be inspirational. And they can say, like, if he can do it, I can do it. That guy's legit. So you really have a dharma to them. You guys all have a responsibility to each other. Right? And as as Twitch chat is saying, go, Kevin, go. They're rooting for you, so don't let them down. Don't let us down. It's a bad idea to live for your Thank dad. You. It's a bad uh, idea to live for your girlfriend. But it's a good idea to live for Twitch chat. Twitch chat. If you can't trust yeah, in yourself, that's what we learned today. Trust in Twitch chat. <laughs> yeah. Go, Kevin. Go. I'm actually looking yeah, right I mean, now. That's yeah. their, it's a, you got this, Kevin. So nice. You got this. Right. All right. Take thank care. Thank you so much. And thank you, thank you to everyone. Yeah, in the, Twitch chat in the is chat, saving actually. lives here. Yeah. I'll 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 write when when there's development. Okay. Write if there isn't development. There's value in that too. All right. right. So don't write based on what okay. happens. Development is happening. Write based on your actions. Don't tell me what's happened. That's the wrong way to think, Kevin. Write based on what you've done. All right. The actions you've taken. Okay. I still don't have a job, but yeah. I applied to 50. That's what I want to hear. Not, I got a job. I don't fucking care. If you, I mean, I do care if you get a job. But that's not the important thing. The important thing <laughs> is applying. Yeah. Okay? All right. Yeah. Take care. Thank you so much. You too.